choir will help me with this song. Savior, oh, Savior. to pray before we share the word of God. I was there here early in the morning in the night hours and these are the things God told me. We will pray about it briefly. He said he will heal seven people. But I want you to pray just key to it and I said only seven. And I started to negotiate. I said maybe God wants to heal seven people. It could be God wants to heal seven different kinds of ailments. It could mean that God wants to perfect our health. So I want you to pray this morning. 
very simply, simple prayer. Say, Father. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus. Any sickness that will lead to death, take it out of my body now. In the name of Jesus. Any sickness that will lead to death, that will lead to my untimely death, Father, take it out of my body. Take it out of my life. Take it out of my home. Take it out of the church. Whatever it is, oh God, that is constituting nuisance in my body. Father, please take it out. Take it out. By your blood, by your blood, I've been made whole. You sent forth your word and your word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Deliver me from destruction. Heal me. Heal my brother. Heal my sister today. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Secondly, we are going to pray. I also, God also showed me. At the same time also, I was at the parking lot. At the same time as well, I saw a tree and somebody was trying to jump the tree was a bit tall and the person wanted to pluck something out of the tree and she couldn't reach it. But the Lord said, I will deliver that thing into his hand. So you will pray a prayer. Say, Father. Father. Say, Father. Father. Things my hands cannot reach things my hands cannot get to. Father, deliver them to me today. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer. Father, Lord, bring them to me. Elijah was hungry, and the Lord, he was in the desert. No food, no water. He was about to die, but God sent a raven to him. Say, Lord, the things my hands cannot reach, the things my hands cannot get to. Businesses I cannot do. Ministries I cannot do. Accomplishments I cannot get to. Houses I cannot buy with because of the down payment. The things I cannot, I couldn't reach. Father, deliver them to me by your spirit. Deliver them to me by your power because your name is Jehovah Jireh. In the mountain of the Lord, he shall be seen. In the mountain of the Lord, he shall be revealed. In the mountain of the Lord, he shall be given. Lord, release to your sons, release to your daughters, the things they cannot get to, jobs they cannot reach, qualifications that they do not have, release unto them. Release unto them. Release unto them. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lastly, some people have been crying to God, crying, crying, crying. And the Lord said, I've answered you. I've spoken to you. I've told you what to do. But they are still crying. And the Lord showed me a scripture. The children of Israel, they were crying unto Moses. Tell God to help us. Tell God to help us. And the Lord went back and told Moses. He said, what is the problem of, this, of the children of Israel? They are crying to me, crying every day. But just tell them to go, move forward. Go forward by faith. And as they went forward, the water spattered into two. I want to encourage you today. The Lord said, most of the things that you are praying for have already answered. All you need to do is to do what? Go forward. So you are going to pray. Say, Father. Say, Father. Enough grace that I need to move ahead, to move ahead, to make a move, to go forward. Father, release that grace to me today in the name of Jesus. The faith that you need, you need a small faith to go forward in that venture, to go forward, Lord, in that thing. Say, Father, Lord, release grace to me today. You've spoken already. Lord, let there be a push. Let there be a push, oh God. Let there be a push. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Father, Lord, as your word comes forward, Father, Lord, let there be healing. The Bible says the power, when Jesus came down from the mountain in Matthew chapter 8, the Bible said the power of God was present to heal and to deliver. Father, Lord, let your power be present to heal and to deliver today in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, those you have healed, let there be confirmation immediately. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, Lord, the things your the, the, the hands of your children couldn't reach. Father, deliver it to them. Deliver it to their doorsteps. In the name of Jesus. We also pray this morning, Lord, the grace to go ahead. The grace to act by faith. The things that you have impressed on the hearts of your sons and daughters. Father, Lord, the grace to make a move. We release that grace today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your word come to strengthen us. Let your word come to encourage us. Lord, let there be enough grace. Lord, to transform lives. Lord, to, to heal the sick. Lord, to, 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 to save the lost. And also to do much more in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. For Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Put your hands together for the Lord. Please be seated. Thank you. Anointed voices. God bless you mightily. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Our theme by the grace of God for this um, month of June is true worship. Can we say it together? True worship. Once again, um, before I go straight into the word, I would like to encourage us uh, to come early next week. Um, our service will not start at 10. It's going to start at 9.30 um, by the grace of God. So please come. Uh, like we have been announcing uh, for some for weeks now, the general overseer. We are so privileged to have the general overseer and uh, his wife, Mommy Gio, to be um, fellowshipping with us next Sunday by the grace of God, and also to bring the word of God to us next Sunday. So please come early if you want to have a seat in the in the house. Otherwise, you are going to be outside. You will not be outside in Jesus' name. So I want to encourage you, invite somebody. Uh, the Lord will do great and mighty things in Jesus' name. Quickly, um, our topic for this particular Thanksgiving Sunday, every first Sunday in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, all over the world, every first Sunday is a time we, um, we thank God for what God has done in the previous month. Okay? It, it is a special grace and privilege to see a new day. Nobody qualifies for it. All right? So please... Know that anytime you wake up in the morning, don't just rush into the bathroom, uh, bro, wash your, I mean, brush your mouth and just go. Make sure that you thank God. It doesn't matter how many minutes, just thank God that you are alive because it's only the living that can praise him. So our topic is true worshipers. Amen? God is looking for true worshipers. And may he find you. As one of them in Jesus' name. John chapter 4, quickly. John chapter 4, I will read from verse 19 to 26. I'm going to be a bit fast. John, 9, John 4, 19 to 26. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto, unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh. When ye shall not, when ye shall neither in this mountain, nor at, nor yet at Jerusalem, okay, worship the Father. Ye know not what ye worship, okay, but we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship God, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Amen? Can you see somebody who is not, who was not a believer? Yet, talking about Jesus Christ. Amen? There is no man, let me tell you sincerely, there is no man that will go to hell 
or that will arrive in hell that will not have an understanding of who God is. You see, most things people do, they do them ignorantly. Some do it as a result of their affiliation to a religion. Some do it as a result of ignorance and as a result of um, a hardness of heart. Okay? Can you see two thieves? I'm just digressing, permit me. Two thieves were, you know, they were crucified on either side of Jesus Christ. Of course, it was obvious they were going to die. It was obvious they were going to go to hell. And one of them started to accuse Jesus Christ. The other one started to say, ah, we, we were being punished for what we did. Look at this man. And even the one that was accusing Jesus was saying, you say you are Christ. Deliver us. So he had an understanding who Christ was. And yet, he was killing. Yet, he was doing all those things. So the woman started to talk to Jesus Christ. But you know that, you know, Jesus said something. Jesus said, give me water to drink. I just want to backtrack a little bit. <laughs> and the woman looked at Jesus. How dare you? A Jew asking a Samaritan in our land for water. Because the question Jesus asked was a question no Jew will ever ask. Because they had no dealings at all. There were cultural barriers, there were religious barriers, there were moral barriers, okay, that must not be crossed between the Samaritans and the Jews. But Jesus, for the first time, he crossed that barrier. Amen. The Lord will give you grace to cross every barrier in Jesus' name. Hebrews 13, quickly. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise continually to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For God, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Obey them that have rule over you. Submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls. And as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is profitable for you. Pray for us. For we trust we have a good conscience in all things. Willing to live honestly. I will read one more scripture, maybe two more scriptures. James 1.27, it says, Pure religion and undefiled before God is to do what? Is to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. I love this Matthew 15. It says, These people draw it near unto me with their mouth and in so much and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines. Can you see? The commandments of men. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. We'll just wrap all this in a few minutes. Introduction. What does the word true, what does it mean? It means exact. It means accurate. It means no shady thing. There is nothing hidden about it. True means it's complete. Nothing to hurt, nothing to subtract. What about worship? Worship means the feeling or expression of reverence or adoration to a deity. I remove that word deity because that's the dictionary meaning. But we are talking about God. Your adoration to God, your feeling, okay? So it is not your coming to church that talks about or that determines your worship. No. Coming to church or, or praising God is just a, a, a certain percentage, a small percentage of your worship. Your worship is the totality of your being, your spirit, your soul, and your body. Somebody can say, I'm worshiping God with ease or mouth, but the heart can be far. The moment your heart is far, you are disqualified from worship or from true worship. So if we put the two together, what is true worship? It comes from a sincere heart. A heart that is aligned, that is an alliance with the will of God. Amen. True worship, the word true comes from it. The word truth comes from true. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and, and the way. The way, the truth, and life. In other words, of course, you see that in John 14, 6. So when you 
talk about truth. You are talking about Jesus Christ. So your worship is your spirit, soul, and body being in alliance, sincere heart, in alliance with the word of God. So you cannot have a sincere heart and you are not walking in the will of God. You have already shortchanged yourself. So your worship is not what you do in the house of God. Your worship is your daily encounter. When you go to work, when you go to do your business, when you do your transaction, when you're on the go bus or when you are driving, you are in the plane, worship is something that is part of you day in, day out. 14, 14 7. It is not about music, although it is much more beyond music. Worship involves your spirit, like I did say before, your soul and your body, everything. That's why Jesus was so passionate about worship. He said, you guys are talking about going to one mountain. What is mount that mountain? No, 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 it's beyond mountain. The, 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 the Samaritans, they said, oh, until you get to Mount Gerizim, God cannot listen to you. And the Jews are saying, until you come to Jerusalem, God cannot listen. Jesus said, no, that's nothing to do with location. It is your heart. That is why Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, is in the inside of you. That means everywhere I go, I carry the kingdom there. So if my heart is not sincere, my worship is corrupted. Praise the Lord. I want to quickly talk about, I'm just going to pick them in pieces, in bits and pieces, and then we'll go. Five types of worshipers. There are about 20 different types of worshipers. Every one of us, we are worshipping something. I was watching one documentary. The lady said, that my religion is soccer. He said, every Sunday morning, I'm at the stadium. It doesn't matter. Come rain, come shine, it will be at the stadium. That is my religion. That is what she's worshipping. And she said, she, she's done it right from when she was young. The parents handed it over to her. The first type of Worshippers is what I call fake or busybody. Can we say it together? Fake or busybody. First Thessalonians 5.13. First, Thessalonians, First Timothy 5.13. And without they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but thoughtless also, and busybody, speaking things, which they ought not to speak. They are not genuine. They have an agenda. They have their beliefs, their ideologies, their mindset, their doctrines. Busybody is all about them. They are very conniving. They are very convincing. They have a hidden motive, ulterior motive. They love titles. They love positions in high places. They are Pharisees. A Pharisee will heap up doctrine, but he will never lift any word of it. A Pharisee will tell you Jesus is law, but he will not believe it. A Pharisee will tell you you need to give an offering to God, but he will never give a dime. Fake. And anyone that dare to go near them, they corrupt him or her. Fake. The Bible says, Paul was so, he was so pissed off. He said, Alexander the coppersmith has done much evil. May God reward him. Wow. What a strong word. And I pray any busybody that is trying to lure you out of the will of God, may God punish them. In the name of Jesus. And if you are that fake or busy body, change today. Bible says, let him that stole steal no more. Number two, because of time. The second group of worshippers, they call them gamblers or political class. They form gangs in the church. They form factions in the church. They cause division outside. Everywhere you go. I mean, there was a lady that used to be in our church, very influential in those days. And the day she was going on vacation, at work, at work, I'm telling you on vacation, she was next to the, to, 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 to the head of the, whatever, of the branch, of the, I mean, of the, of the division. 
No, no, no. The head of the division was going on vacation. The head of the division was going on vacation. And she was next to the man. The man had to look for the third person in the rank to hand over to. And she came to me, begging. I said, but you, what you are doing here is what you are doing there. If I were the man, I would have done the same thing. You see, you, you see you, a, a, a chameleon cannot change his color. You can't. Even if it changes when you see it. Praise the Lord. They are for recognition. What to enjoy, what to grab. Their commitment is double-sided. If there is something to gain from it, yes, they fall in. But if there is nothing, they take event for granted. They gamble on so many things. They are not ready to change. And Jesus also in his day saw many of those things. He saw them. Even among, even among the disciples, Peter, James, I mean, John, James, and his brother, John, they were, they formed a political class. And they went, they didn't know how to execute it. They went and grew, talked to their mother. I know women have a way of doing some things. Hallelujah. If a woman knows that, a mother knows that she, she could talk to the organization for them to reposition the son or the daughter, the woman would do it. The woman went and told Jesus, he said, man of God, you see these my two sons? They are prophesying where? Since they started following you, they have never remained the same. They, were, they have been terrorists to the devil. Even in our street, they know them. Ah! Jesus didn't understand where they were going, where she was going. I said, okay, madam, okay, what is your problem? What do you want? He said, that kingdom you have been talking, you don't been talking kingdom, kingdom. We don't understand the kingdom, kingdom. When you get there, we know you will get there. And these people too, 12 of them, they will get there. But when they get there, my boys, James, John, one on your right, one on your left. <laughs> Jesus said, hey, madam, madam, madam. You see, that thing you just said now, that you just said, Judas, Peter, Call them with the remaining ten. He said, that you just, just mentioned, can you report yourself to all of them? Then the man started to, our sister is here. She will tell you, somebody came and reported us of years back. All the things that she did. I said, are you, this person you are mentioning, I know her. He said, she did this. I said, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Usher. Usher. The usher came in. Please, can you call me? Hey, sister, hey. So, Sister here quickly left what she was doing, came. I said, Madam, everything you just said now, she's here, can you say it? It took almost one minute. The mouth started to do like this. She couldn't bring out the word. And then when she summoned courage, she started all the accusation. And the lady said, what did he just say? I don't even know what you're talking about. Praise the Lord. Political class. You have them at work. You have them in the community. You have them in your whole student association. <laughs> you have them everywhere. They cut. It doesn't matter which race, which religion, which country, which profession. They are everywhere. Amen. All things are not in their favor. What does the political class do? They change party. I come from one country that I will not mention the name of the country. They call the place God's own country. You see, even the president who had served in a political party before in his regime had changed to another party. <laughs> Abomination. Amen. Let's, let's rush. The third type of worshippers. Wondrous or notary public. These are things God told me. I was in the plane when God gave me this message. And that's why I don't want to add to it. I don't want to remove it. Critics of the church. They wander from place to place. From city to city. From nation to nation. From church to church. From job to job. If in the last one year you have joined 10 companies, you are a notary public. You are a wanderer. If in the last 12 months you have been member 
of five churches, you are a notary public. Amen. The Bible says, if you look at 2 Timothy 3, it says, it says, ever learning, ever learning, ever going to church, ever going to Bible study, but they are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. He said, but such people, what do you do? You resist them. You resist, don't allow, because if you allow them, they will cause problems. They have a spirit that has been following them from place to place. I was sitting down in my office some months back. A sister came into the church with letter of transfer. I said, oh, praise God. So um, we have a culture here. What is the culture? The culture is that, I mean, you may be a minister. We just want you to have an understanding of how the system works. Amen. Even if you're an engineer, I'm an engineer, professional engineer from my country. When I came, they told me what to do. To get licensed here, which I have to submit myself to go and do. It doesn't take anything from me. It doesn't take away my first degree. It doesn't take away my second degree. It doesn't take away my third degree. Just to, Jesus had no, had no business allowing somebody like John to baptize him. Somebody he created. But Jesus said to fulfill all righteousness. There are some things that you have to do. Not because... You have to do them, but because you just have to fulfill something. You need a, you can never be a reference point if you don't have a reference. And she brought the letter, and I said, okay. Fill the form. So the ushers, they brought the form. She filled the form. And after she filled the form, it's okay. Let her go through. Then she said, um, she's a minister from where she's coming from. And that um, she just wants to start working. I said, you cannot start working. It's not possible. Okay? And I said, do this, do this, and then you'll be fine. She said she wanted to work in this de in the particular department. And I said, ah, that department is undergoing restructuring. Go to prayer. Go to prayer, just go and ginger yourself up. And after that, you come back. By the time you are back from the prayer team, from the department, you will be fine. She said, Pastor, you don't understand. I can't go to any other department except this department. I said, no, you will not tell us where you want to go to. If there is vacancy there, we will put you there. She was angry. She looked at me to the face. She walked out of my office. She never came back to this church. She never came back. The letter is still on the table there. Praise the Lord. Wondra. And incidentally, she's in one of the churches leading praise worship. And I said, Wow. May God deliver us. You see, we as leaders, as workers, as members of the church, you need to know why you are in a place. I'm telling you. Why are you here? Why are you in anointed chapel? Are you there by mistake? Even if it is by mistake, God can correct it. Okay? Make sure you have a... You see, when you have an understanding of where you are somewhere, it doesn't matter what the pastor says. It doesn't matter what some, one elder does. It doesn't matter somebody who, I mean, who steps on your toe. You are not about, it's not about them. You are not there in that place for them. You are there to do what? To seek God. God is looking for true worshipers. Are you a true worshiper? Where is your heart? Amen. They are very quick and vocal to complain. But they will never lift up a pin. Something is wrong here. Something, why not take it to God in prayer? Something is not right. Why not go and train and then you get it solved? Be a problem solver as a worshiper. God is looking for true worshippers. Wanderers don't stay long. No, 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 they don't. They are quick to find fault in a church, in a leader, in a system, even in the congregation. I've seen somebody who told, who told a fellow countryman who just relocated. He said, brother, you are in Canada? What are you doing? What is your job before? That one said, ah, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. Which company? He said, I work for Chevron. Chevron? Why are you here? Please, can you come here? He's here. <laughs> he discovered, in fact, it was almost like the brother should pack his luggage, go back with the next flight, back to where he's coming from. No trip public. Wondrous. They are holier than everyone. Let me not begin a round up. The fourth one, I call them workaholic. 
These guys, I love them. They don't have a pride. They are ready to undertake assignments. They are ready to walk. Give it all. They have the church to overcome setbacks, delays, and all manner of frustrations in the church. Things move when they show up. They are burden bearers. They walk behind the scene. They don't want to be seen at all. They are ready to make sacrifice. But you know the problem with workaholic is that they take the work more than they worship. They take the work more than their heart for God. Amen? They are ready to sweep. But Bible study, the Bible study can wait. Jesus looked at Mary and Martha, two sisters from the same parents who had the same background, same training, same, same understanding. Jesus came. Jesus never went back to that house after that day. Just one. That's how there are some encounters of a lifetime that you must key into, like our sister Bimbo was saying. Amen? Jesus went there. When you, all you needed to do was just, if it is to tear the garment <laughs> or to touch Jesus or to just make sure that you are tapping something. We saw people that touched him. They, they were healed. We saw people that cried. And Jesus answered them. And Jesus now came to your house to sit down. And you had the air on tree to leave Jesus and go and be cooking. Hi. And she now came back. You know people who, who are workaholic, they have a way of condemning people who are learning. <laughs> and she came and said, Master, can't you see that my sister Mary, she sat your feet. You know, can't you tell her to come and join me? Jesus said, Mary, hold on, hold on first. Hold on, hold on. Your sister, what your sister is doing is the best thing. She's a true worshiper. So you are encumbered with many things, but one thing is needful. Your sister picked it. I pray that you will pick the right thing today. I pray that you pick the right worship today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lastly, God, the fifth type is the spirit and truth worshiper. They are sincere. Amen. They are genuine. I see when I see, when you see a genuine Christian, it's very easy. Amen. The disciples just got to a place, and the people look at them and say, Ah, these are Christians first in Antioch, Acts 17. Why? They talk like Christ, they dress like Christ, they comported themselves like Christ. Everything they did, they saw them. It was not even the body of Christ that named them Christians, it was the unbelievers. That name them Christian. In fact, the first time you ever hear the word Christian is the unbeliever that gave that word. This one, I'm a Christian, you know, uh, male, female, uh, Christian, Muslim, whatever, is the unbeliever that gave us that name Christians. First, in Antioch. They are there for worship experience. They seek God. You know, the thing about God is looking for seekers. The Bible says, they that seek him shall find him. The Bible says in Psalm 24, see, this is the generation of them that seek it, that seek their face. Oh, Jacob! God is looking for genuine seekers. God knows what is in your heart. You cannot, you cannot deny it. They are focused on God. Praise the Lord. They don't allow questionable people to influence them negatively. A woman was angry in the church, was about to leave the church, which is okay. All right? And she went and told somebody, say, we must leave this church together. I said, ah, when did we? <laughs> I'm talking, I mean, maybe the, the, the lady may be here. And the lady said, ah, I didn't come to this place with you. You are going, you go. And it became a fight. In this church, I'm not talking stories. Spirit and truth, believers, worshippers. They hear stuff. There will always be stuff because church is not a, an arbitrary thing. It's people that make up the church. It's not a building. It's not a wall. We all have different characters, different mindset, different whatever. A company not far from here sacked two people in their church. The, sister, the two sisters were in the same church. Can you see? And they happen to work in the same organization. You know what happened? The two were fighting at work, physically. 
the two sisters were fighting physically, and the director didn't have any choice and to sack the two of them. What an abomination. Sisters. <laughs> You know, sometimes it amazes me. So what we see in the church is just a reflection of what we see in the community, what you do outside. Amen. Spirit and truth worshipers, they are disciples of Christ and disciples of the church. They are ready to defend Christ. They are ready to defend the church. Some of your people in your high school or university, alumni, they will be posting things about Christianity. Some of us will keep quiet. Negative things. Negative things about Christ. I will just keep quiet. There was a time, and was in one, in my high school, alumni, a friend, one of our friends had lost his wife recently, and we needed, he said, ah, we don't have a welfare team. Can we just put some money together? And when we are done with this, so that it can, it can help the guy to, you know, do the burial and all that. So you bring $10, $20, That was the plan. And after that, we said, okay, after this, then we now set up a committee to, in case any kind of, that kind of thing happens in the future. And then they started, we started to put money. You know what happened? <laughs> Little did we know that people would put a lot of money inside that thing. And then some people went and formed a gang. They said, what? We can't give this boy all this money. I'm telling you. So at the end of the day, they agreed to give the guy 33% of the money. I'm telling you, a true life story. Maybe some of them are even watching online. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and then they put that, and they agreed with that this, behind the scene, and they put it on the platform. This is the amount that we have agreed to put to give him, and um, and after that's all. And they closed the chapter. The man who was in charge of the money made the transfer, and everybody, of course, when they were doing all that discussion, they removed the guy from the platform. And when they ex finished executing, they brought him back to the platform. And then, I now look at myself. I see Timothy. I'm a pastor. In fact, I'm I'm a brother. If we said, if we agreed that we're going to put this money for this guy. If I did not say anything on that day, God will ask me a question. So, I, I, you know, when I want to write some mails, I sit down. I wrote that mail. I wrote that mail. Serious one. And I say, please count me out of this. I'm not part of this. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, it doesn't matter where you are. He said, come and have two zeros. You are representing Christ everywhere and anywhere you go. I want to beg you in the name of Jesus. Search yourself. If there's any motive that is wrong, let God remove it from you. Amen? Examples. Abel, God accepted his offering. As little as offering. God can accept somebody's offering. God can reject somebody's offering. Do you believe that? A woman came, a widow came. The only two shillings or pence that she had, two pence, she put it. And Jesus was looking. And other people were putting dollars, putting pounds, putting this. And Jesus said, you see this woman? She's the only true worshiper here. She's the only one that heaven has accepted her gift. Solomon. What about Mary Bagalin? But I love that woman. The Bible said, Jesus said, anywhere this woman, the word of God is preached. Anywhere, it doesn't matter. He said, the name of this woman will become immemorial. Hi! I said, God, have mercy on me. May God have mercy on all of us in Jesus' name. As I round up, in conclusion, in Revelation 3, 7, Jesus said, I know thy works. I've said, it be I've said before thee an open door. And no man can shut it. For thou hast but a little strength, and hast kept my word. And you have not denied my name. You may have little strength. You may have little courage. You may not have money in your account. 
It doesn't matter. God has set before you an open door. When your heart is sincere, when your heart is clean, when you want to serve God without any string attached, not looking for money, whether he gives you money or he doesn't give you money, whether he gives you wife or he doesn't give you wife, give you husband, he doesn't give you husband, give you job, he doesn't give you job. You are there for that experience. You are there for that encounter. God said, I've said before you an open door. Bow down your head this morning. Bow down your head. An open door is before you. The only qualification is that you must be a true worshiper. God is looking for genuine men. There are many pastors who are not genuine. There are many brethren who are not genuine. But God is looking. Say, this is generation of them that seek thee, that seek thy face. Oh, Jacob. I want you to pray for us. That God should have mercy. That young man could not look up to heaven and say, Father, please have mercy upon me. Ask God for mercy this morning. Ask God for mercy. Just ask God for mercy. And if you are here, you are not born again, I will quickly, quickly pray with you in, in 10 seconds. In 10 seconds. Are you here? You are not born again. Let me just see your right or your left hand, and I will pray with you. Or you know you are backsliding. A backslider and, and somebody who has not believed, they are the same because the two of them are heading to the same direction. Let me just see your hand. You want God to renew you. You want God to restore you. Or you want God to forgive you. You want to be born, born again. This experience is an is a, a experience of a lifetime. It doesn't matter where you go. The kingdom of God will be established in inside of you. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for how you've helped us. Thank you for speaking to us. You are looking for only true worshipers. Father, from today, Father, remove every insincerity from us. Receive Father, Lord, remove whatever it is in us that will not bring glory and honor to your kingdom. Remove it from us in Jesus' name. Take away carnality from us. Take away wrong mindset from us. Make our worship genuine. Make it true. Make it sincere. And help us to serve you. Help us to follow after you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you.